Before we move on to a new concept in the world of coordinate geometry, let's first revise what we learnt in the 9th standard. We saw how we can draw two lines perpendicular to each other, where the horizontal line would be known as the x-axis, while the vertical line would be known as the y-axis. And the point where both these lines intersect would be called the origin, denoted by the capital letter O. Next, considering O as the origin having zero value, we represent numbers on the lines at equal distances, similar to the way a number line is drawn. And so we would first number the x-axis by taking all the numbers on the right-hand side of O as positive numbers and all the numbers on the left-hand side of O as negative numbers. For the y-axis, we would have the numbers above x-axis taken as positive and the ones below x-axis taken as negative. We then saw how these axes divide the plane into four parts where these four parts are called quadrants. The quadrant between the positive x-axis and the positive y-axis was numbered as the first quadrant while the second and third and fourth ones were numbered after it in the anti-clockwise direction. Finally, this plane consisting of the coordinate axis, the origin and the four quadrants is known as the coordinate plane or the Cartesian plane. Apart from learning about the Cartesian plane, we also saw how the coordinates are defined for any point plotted on the Cartesian plane. For example, look at this point P. Here point P has its x coordinate as 4 while its y coordinate is equal to 2 which means that if you wanted to move to the point P and if you were starting from the origin you would have to walk 4 units to the right on the x axis and then climb up 2 units in the y direction. Also we have seen how the x coordinate of a point tells us the distance of the point from the y axis while the y coordinate of a point tells us the distance of the point from the x axis. And since the distance of the origin from both the axis is 0, we get the coordinates of the origin as 0, 0, right? Let's look at another problem where we can use the distance formula to find out how the points are positioned around each other. Here we have three points, M, E and G where the coordinates of M are 8,6, the coordinates of E are minus 5,1 and the coordinates of G are 2,5. We have to find out if these points form an isosceles triangle. Since we want to check whether the given points form an isosceles triangle, we will first have to find out whether two sides of the triangle MEG are equal or not. Because that's what an isosceles triangle is, right? So, we know that in an isosceles triangle, two sides are equal and so we will find out the lengths of all three sides of the triangle MEG by using the distance formula. So, the three sides of the triangle will be ME, EG and MG. Let's find the distance ME. The distance ME can be calculated by the distance formula as under root of x1 minus x2 the whole square plus y1 minus y2 the whole square. Here since the two points are m and e, we will take m that is 8 comma 6 as x1 comma y1 and e that is minus 5 comma 1 as x2 comma y2. So substituting the values we will have distance me is equal to under root of 8 minus minus 5 the whole square plus 6 minus 1 the whole square. Now 8 minus minus 5 is equal to 8 plus 5 that is 13 and 6 minus 1 is equal to 5. So the expression gets simplified as under root 13 square plus 5 square. 13 square is 169 while 5 square is 25. So we get distance me is equal to under root of 169 plus 25 that is under root 194 units. Now to find the distance EG we will denote E as x1 comma y1 so we get x1 is equal to minus 5 and y1 is equal to 1. 
we will then denote g as x2 comma y2 so we get x2 is equal to 2 and y2 is equal to minus 5. Substituting these values in the distance formula we get distance eg is equal to under root of minus 5 minus 2 the whole square plus 1 minus minus 5 the whole square. On simplifying we will get under root minus 7 square plus 6 square. We know that minus 7 square is nothing but 7 square that is 49 while 6 square is also equal to 6 square which is 36. So we get the distance eg is equal to under root of 49 plus 36 that is under root of 85 units. Finally, we will find the distance mg by denoting m that is 8 comma 6 as x1 comma y1 and g that is 2 comma minus 5 as x2 comma y2. Then by using the distance formula, we get distance mg is equal to under root of 8 minus 2 the whole square plus 6 minus minus 5 the whole square. Simplifying this we get distance mg is equal to under root of 6 square plus 11 square. Now 6 square is equal to 36 and 11 square is equal to 121. So we get distance mg as under root of 36 plus 121 that is under root of 157 units. So let's list out all the distances that we have calculated. We got Me is equal to root 194 units, Eg is equal to root 85 units, while Mg is equal to root 157 units. Do you see any two sides having equal lengths? Well, I don't. So as we can see here that neither of the two sides are equal, we can conclude that the triangle is not isosceles. That was a good problem, wasn't it? So far, we have been finding the distance between two points with their coordinates known to us. What if we already know the distance between two points, but we don't know the coordinates of one of these points? Can we find the coordinates of a point using the distance formula? Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.